Mr. Screamer, you could just tell it was flying in as soon as it left his boot. Hey guys, welcome back to the Chesnoid FC career mode here on FIFA 22. We are very near the end of the final season. You may have seen on social media this morning that I've shown you what the new series is going to be. I was teasing it over the last 24 hours on Twitter and this morning I officially announced the new series. So you'll have to go to Twitter and find out what it is. There's a link in the description down below. Uh, subtle plug for social media and cracking forward today we are trying to advance in multiple competitions the FA Cup the Champions League and of course we want to close the gap on Manchester United at the top of the Premier League 2 that gap is now only two points we're going to sim Bournemouth the initial plan is to play City and then Roma and then sim Newcastle and by the time we get to Everton we should know provided we beat Bournemouth when the next FA Cup tie is if we don't beat Bournemouth then We'll play Everton. Uh, so we're at home in the FA Cup here against Everton. We're having to uh, take out uh, Ryan Havenberg, who's rather evidently gotten himself sent off and is suspended for this next fixture. So oh, I'll have to do it on the previous screen. So we know that uh, he can't be involved. That was in a, a previous simulated game. Managed to get himself sent off in the 17th minute of a game, which was wonderful and I'm very appreciative to him for that thank you mate really good of you so hopefully it doesn't affect our progression in the FA Cup it shouldn't do we're a few days away from the City game so everybody should recover stamina wise for that game so I'm not too fussed about the way that we're playing this one Gawiri scores after 38 minutes and we're through by a single goal to nil against Bournemouth in the FA Cup wonderful right then well with nothing else much to change between now and the City game, I'll probably just see you there. Our potential opponents for the sixth round and quarter final of the FA Cup this year are Southampton, Wolves, Brighton, Manchester United, Chelsea, Reading, or Hull. I think you can probably guess who I would rather draw in that fixture. Matches have been rescheduled, that being the Newcastle one. Oh, oh no, nah. we've been drawn against Hull, evidently, but that's also been rescheduled as well. Uh, Ryan Kravenberg is now available from suspension, but the fact that... Okay, so the Newcastle game has been moved to April. So we will play City, we will play Roma, and we will play Everton, and we'll sim Hull at home in the FA Cup. Okay, pretty straightforward then. We know what we're going to do. Manchester City first then. So City starting 11 in their 4-3-3. Edison in goal. Pedro Porro, Ruben Diaz, Diego Carlos and Jeremy Frimpong are their back four. Calvin Phillips is holding with Braganza and Palaversa sat in front of him. Palaversa the weakest of the players in their starting lineup. Then Ferran Torres on the right. Gabi Jesus up top and Phil Foden on the left. Foden 92, Torres 90, Edison uh, 91, Ruben Diaz 91 on the bench. Dave Kalajic. And Marcus Edwards is decent too. Darwin Nunez is a player that I'd like to use at some point in a save. Raheem Sterling still 88 rated on the bench as well. Ricardo Pereira 83. And then obviously they've got the backup goalkeeper. So City are really strong. As are we. But they are level on points with us in the Premier League so far this season. And we're both two points behind Manchester United. Both would love to not be two points behind Manchester United anymore. So it's going to be a pretty strongly contested game I would imagine we beat them 3-1 last time we played them so we have the history in our favour Foden's just run offside there and then Koe has played him back on again which is lovely Itakura playing for a slightly tired uh, Lacroix Gabi Jesus causing me issues down the right hand side of my defence back heels that there to Frimpong who's going to cut inside find Brakanso on the edge of the box Kevin Jesus, Palaversa, Phil Foden. That is a superbly worked goal. Ferran Torres fires Manchester City in front, and I've barely even touched the ball. Forward to Rodrigo. That's nasty, and will be a yellow card for Jeremy Frimpong in these early stages. Wouldn't expect him to last much longer than the hour mark in this game before getting substituted off for Ricardo Pereira, who they have as a ready replacement on the bench. Diego Carlos to Jeremy Frimpong. Annoying that we couldn't make the most of that free kick. Haven't really made the most of any of our spells in possession so far in this game. So I need to improve. It was nicely intercepted by Ryan Kravenberg. So, and Elliot has got the defenders on the ropes here. And he's worked his way past the defender. And he's buried that past Edison as well. We were not behind for long. Love that. Celebrating with the fans. To be fair, 
I think actually that end of the ground, that's home fans, but whether it's a cutscene. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is home fans, isn't it? He's in behind though. 91 rated the defender, 91 rated the goalkeeper. Mm, he probably wouldn't have said that for either of them. Questionable of Edison. It seems to almost fall over. I don't care. 1 1. That's a great ball out wide to Ferran Torres. A 90 rated Ferran Torres is genuinely scary. Shot blocked well. Oh, he's gone for it there, Frimpong, who's... I'm not sure you'll have seen the highlight, but he's already on a yellow card, Jeremy Frimpong. That would have been very, very dangerous. Oh, look for Harvey Elliott at the back post. Is a good cross, but it's too close to the keeper, unfortunately. Chelsea take a 1-0 lead against Norwich. They're trying to chase us. It's actually Leeds that are in fourth in the table right now, behind ourselves and Manchester City, although they are... Quite a way behind. United are on 60. We're on 58. City also on 58. We have an identical record. It's just goal difference of about two goals that keeps us in second above them. Then there's an eight-point gap back to Leeds on 50. And then I think Chelsea were in fifth behind them. Not too far behind them. It might even have been Liverpool, actually, that were in fifth behind them. And Chelsea were slightly further back. But certainly Chelsea not in the title fight this year. But it is... Judging by the way the, the season has gone so far, going to be a three-way fight for that Premier League title this season. And it's a three-way fight that you probably, at this stage, couldn't call. Manchester United dropping some points of late. And we've been playing really well, as have City, trying to close the gap down on Manchester United. At the minute, we can't be split. Still 1-1 with 10 minutes to go till half-time. Just a quick mid-video... Uh, update um obviously there has been some time that passed apologies for this video not coming out yesterday uh, the first part that you've just seen was recorded yesterday morning but uh we had a medical emergency and had to go out and uh situation is still ongoing but i'm back at the moment so finishing off recording this video uh, this evening and uh you guys will see it saturday uh, obviously at the minute i'm not tending to record at the weekend but or tending to upload at the weekend because of the work going on, but I didn't want you guys to miss out on a Friday video and have to wait all the way to Monday from Thursday. So uh, you're getting this video on Saturday. Continually moving forward for the time being, at least. There won't be any more up weekend uploads, so the next video will be Monday. Uh, and streams, I hope, will be back in the new year for January the 1st. That's the plan. That's the plan. Let's stick to the plan. L plan, as Fernando Alonso would say. Right, uh, we were 1-1 when I left off, so let's carry on. Corner then for City, which they're rather obviously going to take short. Ferran Torres to Phil Foden, and sure many will steal it away from him. Thank you very much. Right, counter. I don't know how fast Braganza is. Cox was just offside there as I glanced to potentially play him in. We can get it inside there to Gravenberg, though. And Rodrigo was watching the line and keeps himself onside. Cox, Gawiri, bit of space to snap the shot away. Two or three times. Harvey Elliott twisting and turning to get away. We'll get an early cross in with Tierney. Ruben Diaz wins that header. Can we get to that? Harvey Elliott's done brilliantly. Rodrigo from the edge of the box. Oh, it's a screamer. You could just tell it was flying in as soon as it left his boot. Fucking belter from Rodrigo. There's the touch of quality that we needed from our side. A little, little bit of luck with the first goal, but that was world class from Rodrigo. Thank you very much indeed, mate. We needed that. We lead by two goals to one from behind and now in front. It wasn't even actually that far in the corner, was it? It looked like it hit the net around about the middle. I was trying to put it into the top corner, but we'll have a look here. From behind, I'm pretty sure that went quite central. It did. It's just gone over Edison. It's just flown over him. What's the height on it? It's just too high. It's flown over him and... Not necessarily in the corner, but shot power and placement good enough to see it pass him. We lead just before half-time in this title battle. It's Ferran Torres. He just he doesn't want to stop. Jesus buries it. 2-2. Two -two. Well, that didn't take long, did it, at the beginning of the second half? Ferran Torres, you expect a little bit of twisting one way and twisting the other. That's a, okay, we're doing that celebration, are we? Shoot yourselves. Expect a step over or a jink. Not just a, I'm going to run in a straight line. <laughs> the simplicity of it is what sold me. Manchester City 2. Chesnoid FC 2. 
And we're back where we started. Again. Bogle to Suomeni. Some news elsewhere. Norwich just got a penalty. Oh, off the post and in. Norwich have scored. That's in their game against Chelsea where they've now equalised at Stamford Bridge. That could be huge for us. Like we say, it is the two Manchester clubs that we're mainly fighting for this title with at the moment. But other sides below us dropping more points in the meantime means that it will stay a three-team fight and nobody else will get involved. We have to hope that Manchester City are dropping points as well if we both end up drawing this fixture. And then we'll close the gap even more and it won't open up back beyond a, a single game's worth of points. I could play Gawiri in here because the fullback's pushed forward and Rodrigo's going to make a good run. Now slot him in and Rodrigo's in again and Rodrigo will not score. Edison comes and smothers it well. Excellent goalkeeping to come out to that. Needed to be done and he did exactly what was needed of him. We'll whip this in towards <sighs> the edge of the six-yard box. Darwin Nunez is on for City now as Gabi Jesus makes way for him. They've made an attacking change. I might make one of my own. We'll have to wait and see what happens in the remaining 25 minutes. Into Palaversa. Quickly up wide here to Phil Foden. As City now press and look for a goal to go back in front for the first time in a little while. They went 1-0 up very early on. And since then, it's been mainly on the back foot for them. They have been able to find that equaliser. Ah. Ah, very nearly finding its way through to Rodrigo, either via Gawiri or via the deflection off the defender. But again, they look out left to Foden to try and create something out of nothing, like Rodrigo did earlier in the game for us. Jeremy Frimpong tries to find Foden, succeeds at the second attempt. Oh, I was going to try and turn him onto his right. Here's Brakansa. That was struck very well, but aimed very poorly. It's a core forward to Havenberg. Lewis Ferguson is off the bench now, as is Gabby Martinelli. We'll see if our changes will be the ones that will change the game. Rodrigo's going to go again, but he gets knocked off it by Palaversa. Rakansa will find Ferran Torres. And we will continue, both ourselves and Manchester City, to look for a winner in this game. Darwin Nunez to Ferran Torres. The obvious ball is around the corner. Pedro Porres. Fast enough to get away from Tierney. Torres finds Bracanza. Oh, the ball through. Picked the defence apart. But thankfully, Darwin Nunez could only fire that straight at the goalkeeper. As the ball went through to the Uruguayan, my heart sank. I thought, that's the game. That's the game right there and then. But no, it wasn't to be. Lewis Ferguson got caught in possession there. But still, we come away with it. Forward to Cox. We will work it to the right. We'll stand it up into the middle. And Cox is there with the header, but he's headed it wide of the target. His floppy fringe isn't going to win us the game on this occasion. Bogle's trying to keep up with play. Sterling has come off the bench. There he is, getting involved. I don't think he's being played at left back. I'm not sure who he came on for, actually. He's pushed forward there, though. Rodrigo can get in behind him. There's really not long left now. We'll look for Cox. His first touch is good. Continuing to run. Kawiri, I knew that had happened, would drift offside. Rodrigo, though, is behind the defence. Stands it up. Oh, Ruben Diaz just gets there. The man at the back post was waiting. I think it was Martinelli to take a touch and then bury it. We won't get the opportunity. It's a draw between the two title favourites or two of the three title favourites. And we will crack on. To be fair, draws probably uh, a deserved result for both sides. Chelsea do also... Only pick up a draw in their game. The Stefano has grown. He's now up to 79. To 79, which is good. We'll keep growing him. Although it doesn't look like he's going to grow it anymore. So we won't keep growing him. That was an easy decision. Right. Next up for us then. Roma in the Champions League. This one is going to be very important. 1-1 one, one, you'll remember from the first leg. And I believe this is the same 11. Maximiano, Pavar, Salisu, Marcal, Centelles, Fabinho and Bellingham with Acampos, De Ketelera, Benassa and Fabio Silva. Pretty sure that's the same 11 that played against us last time with Paolo Lopez on the bench. Quaresma wasn't there previously, I don't think, but uh, Fabian, Spinazzola, Jack Grealish and Carlos Perez were on the bench last time as well. Again, to reiterate, no away goals. So it is quite literally winner takes all. To Pavar to Benassa. 
Turns well. Nice tackle by Shuamini. Vanessa forward to Bellingham again. Out wide to Acampos, who's given it away. Roma were pretty decent in that first leg. They weren't spectacular. But we certainly didn't play to our potential either. Pavard's going to keep pace with Martinelli there, surprisingly. Cox will lay that into Hafenberg. Looks for Gawiri. I'll lift it over the top, trying to find Riley McGree, who nearly gets there. We should win this. We have done. Cox, Martinelli will try and catch the keeper out from distance. But Maximiano does really well to get both hands to that and push it away from danger. An early chance. An early chance not taken. Both Martinelli and Riley McGree come into the starting lineup for us in this fixture. Two changes out wide. Hoping to give us progression through to the next round of the Champions League eventually once we finally actually get the opportunity to take the lead in this game or in this tie Kravenberg was who that pass was meant for but that was absolutely fucking diabolical from Gabby Martinelli and unfortunately no dice yet did I say Gabby Adini again I got feeling in the back of my head that I said Gabby Adini again I've no idea why my brain keeps tripping over that. I'm absolutely lost at my own ineptitude to actually be a good commentator. But regardless whether I did or didn't, I'll find out in the edit. Uh, his name is Gabby Martinelli. I know his game is Gabby Martinelli. I don't know what's happening. Here's Jude Bellingham played in behind. Fadio had to come across the deal and does some dealing. Nice defending. It's very end-to-end, -end, this one. A lot of games... Later in career mode saves do tend to be as a lot of players end, to, end up getting very, very quick as the pace stats just continue to grow. So, you know, the, the general gist of play is a much higher tempo, which leads to a lot more end-to-end -end stuff. That's why you see the team that we were playing with in Season 1 struggle because we didn't have any pace in that side. And we had to just kind of rely on uh, overall good possession play. That was a lovely ball. And here's Cox. No, it's Gawiri. I was trying to find Cox and that's thrown me off now. Martinelli, he'll find Cox. Kravenberg, he can't get the shot away. Oh. If I'd intended to play it to Gawiri, I could have instantly reacted and taken a first-time shot. Cox has turned well. He's just not got the strength to hold off Markel. He does have decent strength. Henry Cox in the mid 80s, even at just five foot nine. But because he's five foot nine, the high strength isn't enough to hold off defenders that are like six foot two and have similar levels of physical ability. It's terrible by Joe Bogle bringing the ball down and uh, letting it be taken under control by the attacker. But never mind. Havenberg has intercepted well. And we will come away with possession. That's a little bit naughty there from Fabio Silva. But. Doesn't make contact. Gabby Martinelli. It's a terrible header, mate. Okay, well, it's nil-nil at the moment. Still 1-1 one, one on aggregate. And it looks like we might be that way for a little while with how the game has been played so far. Sure, many again. And McGree. Kawiri struggling to hold off the defenders. They're very physical, this Roma back line. And even though we have players that have some physicality about them, we're still missing that little bit extra. Thinking about it halfway through the game, it's probably the sort of fixture that Randy and Tekka might actually thrive in. One that's not necessarily too dependent on out-and-out -out technical ability and just needs that little bit of brute force. But unfortunately, Randy's not on the bench for me. It's Medeiros, the uh, Ronaldo region that is. Kravenberg will find Cox. Hopefully, technical ability will win out in the end. I'm trying to pull this back to Henry Cox. And he spun brilliantly. Oh, it might have taken a deflection to beat the goalkeeper. I'm not sure. We'll have to have a look at a replay. But old Floppy Face has given us the lead again. Shout out Mr. Floppy Face. I think that's what we'll call him now. Don't know why. Just decided. Let's have a look at a replay, shall we? I'm pretty sure it took a deflection. Because it wasn't very well... Yeah. I was aiming across goal. And it's come off the defender on the arm. So had it not gone in, if it were real life, it probably would have been a penalty. Obviously, we've got penalty. We've got handballs turned on, but uh, handballs for penalties are turned off. They're making a change there up top. I think it was up top. It's their number seven. 
not sure who it was. Might have been a Campos actually going off. We'll find out in a moment when it will tell me top left. It's Fabian coming on for Ben Asser. So a change at Cam. There we go. Fabian is there. And his first action is to give me possession. Which might seal Roma's fate. <sighs> if Guiri could actually get the ball under control and turn away from defenders. So still 1-0 and 2-1. But for now, we're still wary of everything that Roma could throw at us in the final half an hour. To Catalera. I thought it was just a heavy touch. Good block. Oh, good block again. Second one off Fadio to deflect it well over the top of the bar. Jude Bellingham aggrieved, but aggrieved is what he will have to be for now. McGree will get rid of that. Probably could have left it for Teo Best, but didn't want to take any risks, leaving it for the keeper and then just having it bounce off him because he wasn't ready to actually receive it. We get the advantage played there. Get that under control, then look for the run of McGree, who could get it... Under control, he's done that beautifully. We'll float this looking for Henry Cox. And that's a wonderful counter-attacking goal. That's us through to the next round of the Champions League quarterfinals. Here we come. Fabian out to Centellas. Or there to De Ketelera. And back to Centellas again. Roma have fought hard, but they just haven't quite had, rather ironically from my last point, that little bit of quality. They've got the physicality and have bullied us about a little bit when they've had possession and to knock us out of possession. But the one thing that set us apart over the course of the two ties has been that little bit of extra quality on the ball. And it's going to see us through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League just as we're through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup as well. Facing Hull City in the next game, which will be a, a sim. That's a nasty chop from the defender. It'll be a yellow card for Mark out. Thank you very much indeed. Running the risk of injuring a player with a challenge quite so aggressive. But thankfully nobody has picked up a knock. Injuries are very, very far and few between, aren't they, on FIFA 22? I don't know whether that's by design or it's just, you know, not a thing that this year, as in... Um, I don't know whether they specifically have coded it to not have many injuries. It just so happens that the way the game's been coded this year, it don't, you don't get many injuries. Like I said, I don't know whether that's by accident or by design. But we certainly, by design, have built a pretty capable side right now. Challenging for the Premier League this season. Challenging for the Champions League this season. And also challenging for the FA Cup too. It would be quite the way to go out. If we were able to win the treble here with Chesnoid FC in their final year of this save. I might well look to do another create a club save next year on FIFA 23. Perhaps an AFC Chesnoid from the very bottom of League 2 might be the way we go for it. But I still can't believe this is my only save of, this, of, the, of the year so far on FIFA 22. Because it feels like the game's been out forever. Very rare that we, I don't think, in fact, I don't think I've ever done this many seasons on my first save. Thank you to those of you that are still continuing to watch every day. I appreciate it very much indeed. I know this save hasn't gotten anywhere near as many views the past two seasons, at least, if not three. But I wanted to make sure that we were in full circle with Chesnoid FC. We came all the way full up and at least had one season of trying to win the Premier League before we got the opportunity to... Try pastures new. Right. Hull will be the next one. And then it was Everton at the end of the month, wasn't it? Or was it the... Yeah, it was Everton at the end of the month. And Newcastle was the game that was moved. Right. Are we through to the semi-finals of the, the uh, FA Cup? And the chance to go to Wembley? Yes, we are. Again, a slim margin of victory. Just the one goal to nil. But it's enough to send us to Wembley for an FA Cup semi-final. Which presumably will be played in the month of April. Manchester United, Wolves, Brighton or Chelsea will be our opponents. Brighton or Wolves, preferably. Match rescheduled, we will now know who we have. It said game against Manchester United rescheduled. That might be. It is a league game against Manchester United that's been rescheduled. What a run in. United, Arsenal, Chelsea. Christ. And it's Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-final, which will have to play. For obvious reasons. Right. We're still two points. Ourselves and City. Behind Manchester United. 
Let's go and close that gap if we can, or at least maintain it with a win against Everton. Everton have a regen goalkeeper. Petra Mikeladze is their man between the six. He is the highest rated goalkeeper at the club, I believe. John Joe Kenny at right back. An 85 rated Sven Botman, an 84 rated uh, Urien Timber. So they've got some quality in defence. Ayrton is their left back. Allen is dropped in rating quite a bit. Presumably he's ageing now, but still in their starting lineup. Conrad Lamer is decent. Alex Iwobi is still pretty average. Sergio Canales is pretty average. Uh, Lagshir on the left-hand side is pretty average, but they've got Andre Silver up top, who will be dangerous. It's a mixture of really good players and pretty awful players at Everton at the minute, which uh, I guess is kind of what they have in real life. We'll wait and see how this one pans out, but it should be three points for us. A throw early doors here in Everton territory. We haven't tended to wear the purple kit that often this season. And then every time that we, or at least most occasions where we have, is actually not given us a, a positive result. I felt like it was a little bit cursed for a little while. But we've had some good results with it so far today. So hopefully we can keep that going here. We've obviously been on the front foot to start things off here at Goodison Park. Everton are working about the ball quite nicely from that potential counter-attack from our set piece, but thankfully they haven't been able to find a way through. And I see Rodrigo at the back post so try to whip a powerful cross and a deep cross. But Harvey Elliott can't keep that in, unfortunately, in the former Liverpool man. Not having any luck on his former rival's stomping ground. Hopefully, as a former Liverpool man, he can grab a goal or at least be influential in the game. Time will tell. Lagshit, who's this goal for? It's Chelsea, Man City. Annoyingly, it's a goal for Manchester City. Ferran Torres scored first against us. Ferran Torres scores first against Chelsea. Forward to Gravenberg. Apparently, Andre Silva is a player to watch in this game. I think we've got plenty of our own. Thank you very much. Including Amin Guiri. We're 1-0 up. Thank you very much indeed. I mean, smashes that into the back of the net. And the boys are delighted with that. No news yet on Manchester United's result, but as they're talking about Andre Silva, their striker being one to watch, Javier Elliott has been instrumental getting the assist. Our main man up top, Amin Gawiri, although I'm sure Henry Cox would have something to say about that at the moment with the form he's in, gives us a 1-0 lead. Up the Chesneyans. Oh, that's a very fancy coat. Apparently my guys had a pay rise. Trying to get players from Everton's defensive line and defensive midfielders to just commit, step out a little bit and afford me a little bit of space to try and find some passes to pick them apart but they are not doing that at the moment and I'm finding it quite difficult to find a way through. Took a very good cross on a bit of a counter-attack to uh, cut them apart the first time and Botman intercepts nicely there as well. A pretty solid defensively Everton, just that one opportunity that we've really had we just so happen to take it. They've not offered much going this way, he says, as they have an opportunity and will do again from the set piece. Corner on the far side. Sergi Canales in and Amin Gawiri away. We'll hold our lead till half time, we hope. And then from there till the very, very end. Please. Sure, many. Wide to Rodrigo. And forward to Gawiri. Taken away from him by the Everton back line. Okay, just play a 1-2 off Shumeni if you like. Sergio Canales. Oh my god, that was really bad. Really bad. That's where Everton are lacking at the minute. They've got some players that are pretty decent and others that just aren't good enough, quite frankly. Players like Sergio Canales. At this stage of his career, at the rating he's at, is like an entry-level Premier League player at 79, isn't he, really? You expect teams to come up from the championship to have players that are 76 to 79 as kind of their best players as recently promoted sides. Not to be a player that is a first team cam in a team at a club that should be certainly top half, if not more so, at Everton, considering the size of the club and the history they have. Lagshir going off and... A replacement coming on who I didn't recognise, although he wasn't necessarily in full focus. Oh, he's and a baron a chair. So they do have they do have quality players there. I didn't I can't remember if I actually looked at Everton's bench actually, but 
Still, perplexing that they've got players of that quality that they're leaving out. Rodrigo will play this ahead of Henry Cox, who can race on to it. Conrad Lima is very good. Case in point. And won't be easy to get past. Oh, they've messed it up there, though. And Rodrigo will find Guiri. And this surely has to be two. And is. They've hit the self-destruct button. Everton. Two for us. None for them. Three points. Manchester United lose, please. I would like to go top. Oh, brings that down nicely. Lufted in. Lacroix. Forward to Amin Gawiri and out to Rodrigo. A switch will come in from the far side. There we go. Elliot will bring that down nicely. Back to Tierney. Into Hrabenberg. Forward to Cox. I mean, Gawiri's there. He spun the man well. Rodrigo's the man over. This is surely game over. And it is indeed. Wonderfully taken. And it's going to be a straightforward victory at Goodison Park. Took a while to find the breakthrough. And then a while to finish them off to find the second. But that's game over. Inside to Alan. I'd like to keep a clean sheet if we can. There was absolutely no need for the dramatic there from Fadiol. But all oh, Chelsea get. Ah, he asked about Chelsea at the minute. We get, we're getting solid enough results that we don't really need to look elsewhere other than the two Manchester sides at the minute. Although, actually, to be fair, they are playing Manchester City and they had forgotten that. So Chelsea scoring an equaliser there actually does affect our season. Just stepped a little bit there to try and play Silver offside. We should get to that first with Tierney. And with minimal time to go, this game was over enough when we scored that third. But as you've seen earlier on in the season and earlier on in today's episode, the goal difference between ourselves and City is tight. And having conceded one there late on, kind of glad that um, Manchester City have been pegged back Albeit our goal difference would continue to improve over them if they had won 2-1 and we win 3-1. Or 3-0, as it could have been. But still, gaining extra goal advantage over them should we find ourselves in a spell of poor form. It's certainly going to be favourable. Make make the most of being in the good form whilst you're in it. If you, you've got the opportunity to stat pad a little, then do do so because you never know when that might come in handy. Sure many out to Jaden Bogle. We'll deliver it in. It's another disgustingly good cross, but Medeiros can't find the target. But there's the final whistle. A 3-1 win for those away travelling fans to give us three points in the league. And maybe take us top. We don't know what's happened to Manchester United over this match day weekend. Chelsea have drawn with Manchester City. Thank you. We'll take that. Although don't expect any favours in the game in the cup coming up next month. We've been drawn against Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League as well moving forward. So we'll probably play both of those legs tomorrow as well as, Pal as, well as Palace and Sim Norwich. And then the episode after that will be Brighton, Newcastle and Chelsea. If not, uh, the semi-finals of the Champions League, which, should pr which will probably be drawn. Uh, you know, these final two weeks of April, you'd imagine, if not the very beginning of May. It's going to be a slightly elongated end of season because even though there's two months to go, quite a few significant fixtures left to be played. So we won't take it month at a time. We'll just take it episode at a time and we should finish uh, within the next four or five days. Bearing in mind, potential for cup finals. Multiple cup finals. Right, that will do us for today. Thank you for your patience in waiting for this episode. I appreciate it very much indeed. Thank you for your support on this save. I appreciate that very much indeed. Thank you for your patience with regards waiting for the new save. Ah, <sighs> That will come on Boxing Day is when I'm planning on uploading episode one of the new series. But there's still plenty to be won here in this save. We are two points behind United. Two points clear of City. Guiri's challenging for the golden boot again. And we're all moving in the right direction. I'll see you next time.